Okay. I'm recording now and also my chat box is open. So as we get to questions, if you'll answer from my chat box, I'll really appreciate it. Okay, so Ginsburg started it, Ginsburg and others. It's Ginsburg, Ginsburg, um, Axelrod and Herma. And to be honest, in the beginning, I thought they were married people. They're actually brothers, Ginsburg and Ginsburg. So you'll see Ginsburg et al, Ginsburg and others. And they came up first with this whole developmental theory approach, but they only had three, fantasy, tentative and realistic. So those are the only three levels they had. So up to 11, uh, you know, tentative, 11 to 17, realistic. Okay, so Ginsburg is a developmental theorist because he believed as we develop, that's how we chose our career, Ginsburg. So then Ginsburg came along, after, after Ginsburg came along, Super came along and said, hey, that's a really great idea. Let me just take that theory and expand on it. So then Super, my developmental guy, he came away. So he has a couple of theories. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with his um, rainbow theory, right? However, what I'm going to look at first is his archway. So not everybody has seen his archway. So what his archway suggested is as we're making career decisions, we look not only at our outside, okay, which is our geographical, the community, the school, the family, the peer groups, also on our inside, our intelligence, our aptitudes, our um, special things that we can do, and then those both develop, and that's how we become our true self. So this is his archway model, which we often don't see that, but I have seen that question on the test. Okay, so that is his archway model. And again, pretty much everything I use, I will share with you in the box. If, I'm, if I don't do it, remind me and I'll make sure that you get it. Okay, there we go, that's his archway. And of course he is known for his rainbow, Super's rainbow. So what that's called is his life, his life um, roles and it's his spanned, our life roles and life spaces. Okay. So what he said, of course, is based on um, how, we, how, how old we are. There are certain things in life that, whoops, come on, open up. There we go. Okay. So our developmental theorist, is, again, is how we develop. Okay. Archway and rainbow are not the same thing. Not at all. Archway is kind of how we came together, my outside stuff, how the community develops me, shapes me, what the job market's like. The other side of the archway is my inside stuff, my, ge my uh, genetic piece, how my parents raised me, all those things. They come together, and that's how I develop my true self, okay, which is different than his, his rainbow model, okay? Good question. Thanks. Good question. Okay. So he did have his um, life theory. Oh, come on. Here we go. Okay. Um, so super, he was a career development. He said, as we develop, that's how we decide who we are. Okay. So then, He's got five, five stages in his lifespan, growth, exploration, establishment, maintenance, and disengagement. So if we look at the, um, we'll look at the stairs in a minute, I like the way of looking at that way, but these are our sub stages. So we had our larger stages and then we had our sub stages. Okay. So that's how we began to grow. I'm sorry. We had our, our, these are our larger stages and our sub stages were the developmental tasks we were supposed to complete as we were going through those stages. So growth, exploration, establishment, and maintenance. So you might see a question that says, you know, uh, Pam just graduated from college and she is uh, 26 years old and she doesn't like her career. I'm still in my established stage. Okay. I, I went to school. I got my career. He didn't care if I liked it or not. All he said was, you know, this is the space that you're in. So it's not, so I did this and I'm not happy. I want to go back to school. It doesn't matter for what, what he asks you. What you're looking for is just based on the current stage that you are in. Okay. I'm not liking this one. Okay. So my life space, that's on the rainbow the life space I was supposed to be in while I was supposed to be doing those life roles. Okay. Child leisure, right? It's a term he came up with citizen, worker, homemaker, spouse, all those good things. Pensioner. That's as I get old. 
but most often what you're used to seeing it is is that rainbow closing out some windows feel free to ask any questions as we go along you may ask anytime and you also just can like chat in my set ask something in my chat box okay so what most of us know is that rainbow model right Okay, so that's what we're used to looking at is that rainbow. The careers based on um, my, my, where I'm at in life. Okay, so that's his rainbow model. Not a huge fan of that. Everything is on there and you do have to know the, the, um, the life roles and life spaces. Um, just not a huge fan of looking at it that way. That makes it more complicated for me. I like to look at it this way. When we look at the changes that we made. So if we look at super, and then I'm going to look at it this way, which I prefer. Okay. So then this tells me where I'm going. So my maxi stages we just talked about, right? That is zero to four, four to 15 to 24. You're established from 24 to 44. But look, this makes it so much easier for me and I'm old. So maybe it's just because I need to see visually see it. So four to 14, that is from like, I'm starting elementary school at five all the way till I begin high school. Then that is, I mean, that growth. And you see those, those many stages in there, curiosity, interest, um, curiosity, fantasy, interest, capacity. I remember a couple of those came from Ginsburg. Okay, 14 to 18, I'm in high school, yay, 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 I'm exploring, I'm doing career exams, career inventory, trying to figure out what I'm good at. Between 18 and 25, then I am between exploration and establishment. 18 to 30, oh, wait, I should be established, I should graduate from high school, from college, have a job. 30 to 40, I should be holding there between establishment and maintenance. And then 50 to 60, I begin to uh, decelerate at 60. Um, this is not my chart. I had my last baby at 38, so I'll be decelerating at like 94, just so you know. Death will happen at like 127. I'll still be sitting in the office probably. But that's what he said. <laughs> but in addition to our, our spaces, then we had the task. So what you'll see then is the task. We mentioned that kind of before, crystallization. So that's why I'm getting an idea. That is in my, my high school time. Specification, then I really know what I'm going to do. So now I'm in college and I've got my plan out. Implementation, I've graduated, I've got a job. Stabilization, you know, I kind of like this job. And consolidation, I'm good. I'm maybe going up the ladder or I'm not, but I'm staying right here. I'm good with my career. Okay, so that's according to super. Now, um, one of the things that you, you'll see on the test also is the difference between career, job, and occupation. So I'm be brave enough to tell me, what's the biggest one? Career, job, or occupation? Occupation. Career. Career, career is the biggest one. Exactly. You get the bell. Okay. Career is the biggest one because according to um, the text, career includes my leisure. Okay. So um, but if my career, if I have a very uh, a good career and I am doing well in my career, then my leisure time would be. So many times um, I'll make more money. So all of that good stuff that includes in the career shall that last chart show that last chart it's not on that chart that's just a question that you might see okay so career is the biggest my occupation is in so uh, my career is what I what I do I went to school for this out oh, the stairs yeah I can go back to that and I will share that thank you okay so my career is definitely um, what I chose to do my occupation is what I'm doing right now um, so I am, um, I'm a social worker by trade. That's what I've learned to do that. I got my master's degree, um, back in 90, mm, long time ago, 91, 92. Um, I just got my PhD recently. So then that, that, that is my career as well as my occupation, but my current job is that I teach college. Okay. So I also own a business. I own this business. So that is my current job, but my career and I'm sure many of you have had different jobs in this occupation, but my career has allowed us to live a lifestyle because I've been doing this for the last 30 years. 
Okay, so that is our career. That is my career. Okay, and yes, so there's the link to your chart. I think I can copy and paste it there also. Okay, so Ginsburg and Super. Also, then Savicus comes in this list as well. Okay, he came along later and he also believed. I'll post that picture. Yeah, we'll like that picture. Hold on. Copy image. Here we go. Got the image. There we go. Okay. So then, um, Savicus is one of those, again, he came along later. He was after, um, came along after um, Super. And Savicus was a constructivist theory, but he also was a developmental theory. Anybody know what constructivist theory means? In general, a, a constructivist career person the word constructivist or construction theory or anything like that is how we see it. Those are things that we decide that are abstract. Happiness, sadness, gender roles, all of those things are constructivist or things that we see as constructs. So if we're looking at a different country, um, their gender roles will be different than our gender roles. So constructivist theory are things that we conceive as Americans, as an ethnicity, as a group, happiness, sadness, things that are abstract we can't measure. So he was a developmental theorist, though, but he was known. He was a constructivist, but he was in the line of super. Okay? You know this guy, Frank Parsons, yes. Choose the vocation. He wrote that book. First trait and factor guy, Frank Parsons, yes. Okay? So, again, he believed in studying the individual. He said, if you know yourself, and you know about the careers, then those could can make a perfect match. Okay, that's my trait. So, uh, so uh -huh. Frank Parson was a constructionist theorist? He was not. He was not. Okay. Sorry, I was talking about Savicus, and I'll go back into that. But no, he was not. He was our very first guy. So he didn't. He was a he was a trait and factor guy. Okay. Okay. I was trying to figure out how to spell Savicus. Is that oh. one with the S A V? Uh, it is, and I'll, I'll get to it in the in the um, slideshow. Yes, yeah, Savicus. No problem. C-V-I-C-K-A-S, I think, Savicus. Um, however, so our trait and factor people, um, Frank Parsons, again, the first, first vocational guy, and that name, E.J. Williamson. Does that name sound of, ring a bell? It shouldn't. Okay. So that is, though, the Minnesota viewpoint. The Minnesota occupational scales, all of those things are E.J. Williamson. Okay, that's the Minnesota model. You'll see that more often. The Minnesota model suggests that uh, men were not ready for a college career. So they looked, he looked at measuring those semi-skilled um, professions. That's the Minnesota viewpoint. So that belongs to Williamson. Okay, Rhea Sack. That belongs to Holland, Holland's hexagon. So Rhea Sack. So with Holland, um, he came up with a, an inventory. And what you would do is you would fill out the inventory. Let me see if I can find you one. And then whatever letters you got the most, the highest in, that would be your career choice. In general, when you see inventory, that means or interest, that, that is related to vocation. So if on that assessment part, if you get a lot of questions that you're not sure, an assessment, most, an inventory, I'm sorry, an inventory um, belongs to a career. That's a career choice. Let's see if I can find that test. Holland's Codes. So what you would do is you could um, take his inventory. And as you took the inventory, you get an R, an A, an S. The self-directed search is computerized. 
Okay, so that came along later, and you're correct, but you'll see that one on the, t on the test is what was the first one that was self-directed, and it didn't, it didn't need assessment from anybody else. So that didn't come along till later. Okay, but first, what he did first was he did um, his own. So you would kind of sit there and you'd go through. If you got more I's, more R's, whatever, that's what you would get. Okay, so my R people, realistic, very hands-on. My investigative people, um, social workers, counselors sometimes, policemen, artistic, social, enterprising. My enterprising people are my salesmen. They like to get out there and convince you they're charming. Um, say, a producer, a lawyer, a business person, all of those things. Conventional, the people who like to, to make things always match. The numbers have to always add up. My accountant, my baker, my banker, those people. Okay, so Holland's personalities was when you took the test, you would come out with um, their three highest scores would tell us that your personal inventory. So you get three letters, an R and I and E, an A, S, E, one, any of those things. So that is a RIASAC. And that is by Holland. Holland is a trait and factor guy. Okay. So he was the one that followed after Frank Parsons because Frank Parsons also was a trait and factor guy. Okay. What does trait? Ah, thank you. Good question. What he said is my traits, who I am, my personality. That's why you take the personality kind of inventory. Those things would then decide what I'd be good at. So my traits paid a factor in my career. Okay. So trait and factor. What he said is if you know about you and you know about the careers, then you can decide what you're going to do. So that's Holland's hexagon, trait and factor. My developmental people again, of course. Siggy. Siggy is also one. Um, Siggy is a computerized assessment as well, but that doesn't belong to Holland, I don't believe. That is one of our newer ones, um, and Holland's way before that. Siggy is um, it's usually under assessments as opposed to actually under the career section, but that is one of those online um, career tests you can take. Yes, but you will see Siggy. But it's more, more in the assessment piece, I believe. Okay. So my um, developmental, so we talked about super. So, so developmental was super. Start off with Ginsburg first. Super. Rainbow. Archway. Okay. Then we have Godfrey Sun. Circumscription and compromise. And if you've had me before, I do call it circumcision. <laughs> because what she looked for was how we were raised, that we looked at the gender roles, how we were taught when we were little, um, and that helps us then make a decision of what compromise we're going to make. Okay, so what she said was that we, oops, go back, okay, ah. the way we were raised, we had, she had four levels. Um, the first level had to do with our um, assignment of our size. That first one was size and, here we go, orientation to size and power. So three to five. Three to five, size and power really wasn't that big of a deal. Sometimes the girls are bigger. Sometimes the boys are bigger. Not a huge deal. Okay. So I get to my second one, orientation to my sex roles. You see the boy has the airplane because boys are taught very early. Their, their toys are based on their careers. You know, be a fireman. Get the little army men. Um, girls, we were given the Easy Bake Oven. A little toy vacuum cleaner you know that's what we were taught barbie so i can be like thin and you know and but if i was barbie and i had a career barbie i might get to be the barbie but i still have a really short dress on right so that's how children were reared according to godfreyson so this is the circumcision circumscription of how we started okay so then we look at our next one orientation to our social valuation that means i'm really looking at my my value in society I learn that boys who play sports are many times more valued than a girl in her career. So most often, and especially, you know, if you're younger, not a big deal. But at my time, you know, we were, my mother really taught me that what I needed was to get that MRS degree. I'm 54 though, so that was a long time ago. But my orientation, my social value wasn't based on my career. And then orientation to self, my unique self. So from 14 up, then I realized who I am. 
And I realized that many times, again, according to Gottfriedson, that boys, what mattered was, you know, um, what, what they could do. Their social value is based on what they could do. So he's a basketball player. Everybody goes to see the NBA and the boy sports. But the girl, she's a ballerina. She's cute and she'll go do something else. Okay. So given that, then I make career choices. So then if I am reared to think that girls' career choices are not that important or my, as a boy, my career choice is very important, then I'm going to make a compromise based on my career choice, on how I was reared. So then the higher, the more um, prestigious the job was, the less likely I would be to then take that job. So if I'm a female and I really might be okay with being an NFL football on the sidelines, you know, I could be like the, the um, line coach, the workout coach. I'd be okay with that, again, according to, to Godfreyson. However, I would be very uncomfortable to be like the head coach for the NFL or maybe even the owner of an NFL team, okay? Because you'll see my gender says if it's very masculine and I'm very feminine, then my compromise, I'm not going out of my tolerance zone. So my zone of acceptable alternatives I'm not going past that. Um, can you see it? It's right there. Oops. G-O-T-T-F-R-E-D-S-O-N-S. Got Fred Son. And it's circumscription and compromise. The circumscription is how you were raised. And the compromise is what you'll make because of the way that you were raised. Okay. Again, I'll tell you, I'm 54. I told my mother when I was in high school that I wanted to go to the Air Force and jump out of airplanes. At the time, that was not a girl job, and I do realize now it is, but at the time, my mother made it very clear to me, my good old Southern mother, that girls didn't do that, okay? So then, and now, of course, um, she emphasized gender and prestige. She said that I will make a compromise, that based on my gender, I will not take a prestigious job that is not in the gender role that I'm perceived. So if I'm a man, I may be okay working with a feminine hygiene company. I may be okay selling things for the company. I would not be okay being the president of a feminine hygiene company. If my face was the one you saw as a man advertising some tampons, I would not be okay with that because that is not how we were reared, that this is the compromise. So my compromise is I will take something less because of the circumscription, because how my parents circumcise me, <laughs> circumscription, then I won't even take those choices. Okay, same for women. So that is God free sin. Okay. So then, oh yeah, no problem. So then again, we talked about Ginsburg and others. Okay, Ginsburg and others. Those are the Ginsburg group. Um, they were my occupational people, developmental people, super borrowed from them. Teeterman and O'Hara, they were also developmental people. Okay, however, they came on the side of uh, Erickson. So what they said, Tiedemann and O'Hare, and you'll see them together, they talked about um, this normal development. As you begin to develop through those stages, that's how your career developed. Okay. Kohlberg, I'm sorry, uh, Krumbaltz. Krumbaltz believed that there were lots of other choices. He said that, um, go back to this one. Go back to Krumbaltz. So Kumbrot said there was a genetic piece to my careers. Okay. So what he said was there are four things that make a huge part in how I make a career choice. And one of those was definitely my genetic piece. So he said that genetically, um, I maybe have a few more points than some other people. You know, if my mom and dad were both doctors, genetically, I might have a fewer IQ points. By the way, normal IQ is 100, 100, okay? Below 70, I'm in the mildly or mentally retarded range, MMR. Below 100, above 120, I'm gifted. 140, I'm in Mensa category, which are those people who are really, really, really smart. Okay, so IQ, you'll see that on the test. So then, cognitive, that's my IQ, how I process. My mom and dad had these great brownie, these great IQ points, so would I. And then our social environment, my learning environment, mom and dad are doctors, who are we hanging out with? 
other doctors. I'm traveling. I'm doing all these great things. The model I see are people who work hard, who went to college. And then my behavior, when I go to study, when I go to do things, is going to be reinforced. So that all of that is how I change. I learned, I, I got my career according to Krumbaltz. So same thing with the opposite analogy. According to Krumbaltz, if my mom and dad were, you know, um, uh, my mom was a, a, a waitress and my dad was a taxi cab driver, then maybe I might not have the most IQ points. My environment would definitely be a lot different. People that I saw modeled. And while I may say I want to go to college, that what to reinforce is get a job, Pam, because you have to help pay the bills. Again, that is crumbled. So he believed all of those factors played a role, including a genetic piece, when it came to getting my career. Um, one of the other people that believes there was a genetic piece, he was actually the cousin of Charles Darwin. And remember, Darwinism, the survival of the fittest. So um, Sir Charles, and sometimes you'll just see Galton. Okay. So he was a cousin of Darwin. And what he said was it was a genetic piece. So if you look at him, this was, you know, back then. And what he said is um, that it, it comes strictly from genetics. So that's why it was okay to marry your cousins. So if you look back at the time of the kings and queens, that good stuff, you married, you, you married people who were related to you because the belief was that, you know, that's how my, that's where my smarts came from. Okay. So that's Krumbaltz. And that was also, then we talked about, you'll see him sometimes, Sir um, Francis, Gal uh, Sir Francis. Um, Crumbaltz also came up with planned happenstance. Planned, planned happenstance says sometimes you fall into a career, okay? That you've done all of these things, you've studied, you're in the right place at the right time, and sometimes this career just happens. CIP, that is my cognitive information processing. That's another theory. What CIP says is that I, again, so have to know myself, have to know things about the, um, the occupation, mm, trait and factor, trait and factor, know myself, my other stuff about the occupation. Then I'm going to go through this information processing. My brain's going to kind of kick on and I'm going to look at C. I'm going to look at A, S, V, and E. Let's go back to those. Okay, communication. I'm going to talk to somebody about it. I'm going to analyze it. Look about, like, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? I'm going to synthesize it, value it, and then I'm going to execute. So COSV is the second level of that CIP stage. Okay. And then metacognitions. I'm going to take all that information together, and I'm going to choose a career. Okay, this one doesn't have a name. It's just called the CIP, Cognitive Information Processing. Okay. So that is, again, one of those theories of how I pick my career. So we've talked about Ginsburg and others. We've talked about Super. We've talked about um, Holland's his Hexagon. We've talked about Godfreyson, um, Sir Francis Galton. Okay. So those are some of my biggies. Got a couple more I want to get to. Okay. Uh, Savicus. Savicus was a constructivist. And here it is, S-A-V-I-C-K-A-S, -A -A Marcus Savicus. Savicus. So what he said was that um, our careers are uh, uh, constructivist. Again, that's a theory of th how I perceive things. So individuals have these life themes and they, de they decide your career. Okay. But it's not something you can touch. It's a tangible thing, an a, a non-tangible, abstract. Okay. So when I construct my career by imposing the meaning of what I want out of work, that's how I come up with it. He is considered postmodernism. He's one of my later guys that came up with this theory. Because constructivist theory is also postmodern. So that is kind of a newer theory when it comes to any of those careers. Anne Rowe. Somebody tell me, who did she pick her, her theory off of? The motivational guy, the guy with the needs. Who was that? Sorry about that. Just need to get something to drink there. Exactly. Maslow. Okay. So Maslow um, is um, 
Maslow is my pyramid, right? So what Ann Rose said was, she said, you picked your career on what your mom and daddy didn't give you, basically. So she is really a, um, talked, she came from uh, the Maslow approach. Those bottom things on the Maslow theory, of course, are my um, B needs. I'm sorry, D needs, my deficits. Okay, so the things that I need are my deficits. So if you look at my psychological needs, of course, food, warm, food, warm, shelter, all that good stuff. My safety needs to be safe and secure. My belonging is my self-esteem. The ones at the bottoms, my basic needs are called D needs. This is called a theory of motivation. It's a motivational theory that I am inclined to keep going up the ladder because I'm motivated. The goal is I want to get to the top. I want to be able to worry about my self-esteem. I want to get to self-actualization. According to Maslow, we're motivated to keep going. So lovely Ann Rowe comes along and she says, oh, well, that's a great idea. So what she said was then I am going to, um, but people pick their careers based on what they didn't get from their parents. So if your mom was not loving, not caring, um, not overly um, warm, then you were going to pick a career in which you, you got to interact with people. Okay, so that's all that talks about. Okay, so then she said, if you had avoidant parents, they didn't show you love, they uh, gave you minimum care, um, that they, the clash promise, <laughs> that's why we're all counselors, because our parents messed us up, but yes, <laughs> only according to Roe, okay, <laughs> no other theory says that, <laughs> so yes, so if we got those things, then again, we would find a kind, and these are the parenting styles. And I haven't seen this part on the test, like the actual styles, just in general, knowing that our, our career needs are based on what we didn't get. So she has fields and levels, okay? So again, if our parents, um, if they were very acceptance, yeah, okay, so if our parents were very avoiding, um, then we would choose a career where we, okay, if our parents were avoiding, then we felt there's too much or they're too over demanding. If our parents were accepting, they were too overprotective. Based on that, that's how I chose my career. Okay. So then what she had was both fields and levels. Okay. So then based on that theory, so she said, question okay so again how my parents raised me okay what I didn't get if they were cold if they were warm what I was missing then I'm going to again find a career based on what I need and then she had so fields and levels the fields okay service business organization technology all of those are the fields I'd work in and the level then had to do with how I was parented so my fields Okay, those are my eight fields and my levels, depending on what I needed. Okay, so there are six levels and eight fields. So then if my parent, if you go back to the chart, and you'll see kind of you got a one, two, three, and seven, eight, and over here, I haven't seen it be that detailed on the test. Um, all I've seen really is basic that you know who Anne Rowe is and she, you know, that she's a follower of Maslow. And you're going to look for the term fields and levels. Okay, we picked our career based on what we did not get. Okay, and if anyone who's taken the test recently and has seen it in more detail, um, let me know. I just haven't seen it in that much detail other than kind of knowing enough about who she is. Okay, so we discussed some biggies, guys. I'm going to pull up some questions here. I'm going to use my NCE. this one I think um, you will never ever 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 know everyone and the goal is not you'll know everyone the goal is that you will know enough to know who it can't be let's just try that one today hmm 
that's not not one of my favorites let's see this one um, okay so this is the NCE this is not the best book to test for to um, practice to take the test this one is just really really good for knowledge and of course you have to have the knowledge the content before you know how to answer those questions Um, so careers is a pretty good chunk of those um, those groups, those names. I mean, unfortunately, their their names and kind of knowing who did what and what kind of developmental theory they use. Um, I have really heard that what we're looking at for the test now is a lot like pocket prep. If you're not doing those or behavioral health prep, those are the same thing. If you ended up buying both of them, call them back. They're exactly the same thing. It's just a new name for the company. Um, but what you want to do is kind of make sure that you are um, seeing how those questions are asked. Okay, They're, these are what I'm giving you today is just content to make sure that you understand the career people and what they do. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, just kind of the career people. Are there certain assessments? So not really. So the only assessment that really that goes to anybody would just be Holland. Um, so and most of those like the SDS. Those are more in the assessments um, study guide part. Uh, and it often don't even, it doesn't even see, um, so pocket prep does not. You have to go into the core counseling skills. It used to before, but now you have to go to the core counseling skills to actually find those groups and those type of questions. So I'm picking up my career people here. Okay, so then. Okay, so let's find, find your fingers and be sure you type in some answers for me or speak the answers, okay? So, which career therapist talked about my life roles? Who did that? That would be super, yes, you I'm got good. it. Yeah, yes. Okay, how many stages did super say there were? Those are those macro, the, the outside stages, not the, what you were supposed to get on the inside. How many stages? Five. Yeah, yes. Okay. Holland, trait and factor. What does that mean? Which two things are matched together according to Holland? C. You got it. So my personal tally trait with my, the job requirements. So if I knew who I was, so it's not gender. So A is gender. It's not gender. It's not, it's, so it's my personality. So if I know more about my personality, then I'm probably going to get a job that fits my personality. That's a Holland theory. And remember, though they're all theories. Um, theories are like, um, you know, noses or anything else. Everybody has one. So you're going to say, according to Holland, according to so-and-so. So theories may not, we might not agree with the theories, but those are just, well, they are just theories. Okay. 422. Look at Jeremy. Remember, you're going to get three letters, but your highest one is going to be your first letter. Okay, so realistic because why? Um, he's working with his hands, right? Okay, investigative. Investigative could be because he's investigating. That's what we do. Um, he's a watch repairman. Okay, conventional would not be it. That would not be his highest. So his highest would be realistic because he's a very hands-on kind of guy. Okay, he's got probably doing some investigative. He may not be very social. He's just going to, you know, see the person return their watch. But yes. Okay. Oh, 424. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. 424. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm going to keep my COVID on this side of the screen. And I'm joking, but yeah. Okay. So again, you might not know everybody, but I know you know at least three of them. Ro, we've talked about. And Ro does my, um, she's a, a follower of Maslow. I know Holland because he's Holland's hexagon. He's straight and factor. And on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, so which of those? Come on, chat, type, type away. Let me see. Thank you. Yes. 
You believe that people are attracted to particular jobs and have a particular personality trait. Your thinking is aligned with which cure therapist? It's Holland, exactly. My personality, my trait, and my factor. Bingo. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 425. Jared is a successful lawyer who is often in the courtroom. Of the following, which set of letters would most likely correspond to his profession using Holland's criteria? Okay. He's a lawyer in the courtroom and he's a successful lawyer. CRA. Okay, so he'd be um, C is my RIA SAC. So C would mean he'd be conventional. Most lawyers are probably not conventional. Okay, those are people who like to do very, you know, strict to the rules. Okay, so then he is an A. Enterprising, he's charming, he can kind of get you to believe what he's saying. Investigative, he can find out what's going on. And social, and the, clear, the question says, because he is in the courtroom. So that is a question that might be on the test. So because you have to go back to the question and look. Not always a successful lawyer, but it's successful in the courtroom. So that's ding, ding, ding. That's social, right? Okay, so that is A. But, but isn't enterprise more like a salesman? A salesman? Girl, you know a lawyer be a salesman? No. So how? How? Is he's, going, he's trying to he's trying to convince you that his client is innocent. Okay. Okay. Trying to sell it. Gotcha. Yes, he is. So of course he's trying to tell you up his client. I don't. He he can. The glove didn't fit. You remember the OJ trial, okay? Because that's what they do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Okay. So that's making sure that you read all the questions there, all, all those, the part of the question, that's the STEM part to understand what you're looking for. Okay. So then which is true about the stability of Holland types? And I'll just tell you, um, because I was surprised at this, the answer is C. It is stable across gender lines and racial lines. That that is, and, and we've talked about, well, not, not maybe I said it before, but in general, we do know there are not, the all of our tests have some bias, some built-in kind of bias in the testing. And that inventory that RIA-SAC has really shown to be across race and gender lines that it really works. Okay. That's one of the most common ones. If you uh, do career counseling, if you work in a, um, um, I don't know, a school maybe, I'm not sure, uh, a career office, but that's one of the one most often, the one of the most widely used test. Um, and by the way, career counseling is not a DSM billable code. So then if you see a question that talks about, you know, can you um, bill for this? You cannot. You cannot. You, um, uh, there's a question like, you know, the client comes in because they have anxiety. Um, however, you cannot. Okay. If they come in because they have anxiety. You can build them for anxiety, but if they come in with career issues and they happen to have anxiety, it's unethical to build them for the, the anxiety if you're really focusing on their careers. Okay. Haven't talked a lot about Bandura. Bandura is my social learning guy. Um, so if you um, remember him at all, he came up with that Bobo doll thing. So you might see his name in the early parts where it looks at um, our developmental people because he was a developmental person. He looked at how we learned. So this is a, 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 I love this theory because I had a Bobo doll, but not really because I was the girl. My brothers had a Bobo doll. So just so my parents told me I'm a good, I'm a good preacher's daughter and we weren't allowed to hit anybody. The boys were, not the girls. Okay. But the Bobo doll was pretty popular in the 70s. Um, and, you know, it had sand in the bottom, so it wouldn't flip over. Ah, so remind, Crystal, hold on to that question. I'll come back to that. If I don't answer it, remind me again, okay? So then the Bobo doll was an experiment where the kids um, saw the doll was, art, was part of the classroom. It was the coolest toy at the time. It really was. Um, and so they, what they did was the kids saw the teacher be much more aggressive to the doll than ever been. And that was like, whoa, the teacher's beating up the Bobo doll. And when they saw the person in authority beat up the Bobo doll, what they learned is that it was okay to beat up the Bobo doll. 
So that's social learning theory where they looked at how they learned um, and they learned that aggression, aggression can be taught. Out of this research in the early 70s came when we began to censor TV shows. So about 10 years later, we began to um, come up with children not watching those aggressive shows on TV. Um, when it first came out, we actually thought that uh, cartoons were aggressive also. Um, we did learn later that cartoons didn't have the same effect as actually seeing the people do it. But that's where that comes from. So that's my Bobo doll, and that's Bandura, social learning theory. Bandura taught you how to stand on an elevator. That you didn't actually, your mom didn't give you, you know, directions of how to stand on the elevator. You just kind of knew. She took you in. You didn't face the people. You turned back. All those things. Social learning theory. How we learn to behave in society. Okay. So, yes. Um, so back to your question then. So, Krumbaltz did have a part of that that was social learning. However, Krumbaltz also believed that there was a genetic piece to it. Okay. So, so um um, Bandura did not. Bandura just said, we learn by watching. So then, back to Bandura when it comes to career. So later on in his life, he came up with another theory where he talked about, um, he talked about our own um, self-efficacy. That if we believed in ourselves hard enough, big enough, long enough, that even if we are both social learning theorists, Krimbaltz is a is a social learning theorist. However, he did not only look at social learning. He believed there was a genetic piece too. Okay, so Krimbaltz said there were other there was there was my um, my environment, my genetics, and how uh, I was social how I learned socially, and then what I got from if that behavior was reinforced or not. So it was just all of those factors for Krumbaltz, and social learning was one of them. That is correct. Um, so Bandura then also said um, self-efficacy. So later on in his career, he came up with that. So he said that, um, and I think we all know people in life, probably many of you sitting in this room, that um, sometimes things didn't always come as easy as you would like, but you believe you can and you keep going. So self-efficacy is I, I can do this. I can do this. I can pass this. I can do this. So then Bandura's social cognitive theory, social learning theory. Okay. So what he said is if you believe hard enough in yourself, then you can do it. That's called self-efficacy. <laughs> yes, this test. Exactly. <laughs> Lori, I'll be honest with you. Most of the people that I end up tutoring are people who are really, really smart. The problem is they've never had to study. So that's the problem is because many, most of my students, and I have about 70 students a week, um, and what I find is the people that I tutor are the ones who just, um, college was easy, and you never really had to study. So you probably have higher IQs. You have a master's degree. Again, they don't hand them out. You have a master's degree. <laughs> the issue is you've never had to actually study and retain the knowledge for any length of time because life came easy for you. I mean, it doesn't ap uh, uh, apply to everybody, but I can tell you for most of my students, yeah, that's what it was. Yes, and you will pass this one. You will. Okay, so back to 427. A client has with his compass in an area where the counselor knows he has very little ability. So then, using Bandura's social cognitive theory, which of the following is possible? And exactly, psychological damage. So I really think I can. If you've seen Michelle Obama's uh, uh, movie or book becoming that's what she says that you know the guidance counselors didn't even ask her about those schools so but she knew she could okay that's uh, so if you tell me that I can't or I shouldn't and I believe I can that can damage my psyche my psyche exactly good 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 okay 428 self-efficacy and self-esteem are they the same they are not they are not Exactly. My self-esteem is how I feel about myself, what I look in the mirror and what I see. My self-efficacy is, and I may have low self-esteem and still have self-efficacy. I can do this if I try hard enough. Okay. I'm going to skip those. Let's go down to, oh, 48. It's a, I'm sorry, 40, 431. Amy, 48. Okay. According to Super, it's a super question, remember? He was one of my developmental guys. He had lots of theories. What did Super say? 431. Should 
She's 48. And she is stabilization. Okay. So, yes. So, very good. Implementation is, is the, um, I've just got my career. Okay. So, I, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crystallize. So, that's my, my late high school, my early college. I know I want to be a counselor. I know I want to do this. I, I, I really have decided that. Okay. So, then after I crystallize, I'm going to then implement, right? Then I'm going to stabilize in my career, and then I'm going to consolidate. Okay, so she is 48, and she has been there. She's already at the top of senior edition, so she's actually past stabilization. She's in consolidation. So that one's actually D, not C. Okay, because she's 48. So at 48, if you go back to the stairs. Again, I, this is just oh, okay, this is just a theory. I so, thought consolidation was when it's close to retirement age. Um, so, for, she's forty-eight. So she's here. Okay. So. Yeah. So she's established. We'll go back and look at these numbers. Okay. So then, crystallization specification, stabilization, or consolidation. So then, let's see, she is 48. Okay. So, so she is past establishment. So she is then consolidating. She's at the top of her career at 48. Okay. And then after that, she would begin to decline. Okay. So she is in consolidation. Okay, 432. Yes, we talked about that. Super, I think this term would be now sampled. He sampled. <laughs> He stole it. So, yes, yeah, super borrowed Ginsburg career. He expanded on his career. I think in music terms that many times the rappers sample old music and they take that and they expand it. So, yes, it is D, Ginsburg and super. Holland is a trait and factor guy. So, Ginsburg, super, Tita, Tiederman, and O'Hara are all considered my developmental people. Okay. So then, 433, this is the defense mechanism. So fix, if you can tell me what this one is, guys. What defense mechanism is this young man using? That is correct. Look at you. Sublimation. Sublimation is when I have a, uh, there's a defense term from Freud, and that is when I am, um, when I am hiding something that I, that I don't think is appropriate for society. Okay. So to sublimate, uh, sublimate means that I'm choosing a career to, to show something that most of America would say, or most society would not accept. So if he was a, a man who had an eating disorder as a teen and as an adult, he continued to count his calories, watch what he was eating, you would think, wow, maybe there's a problem there. However, um, there's not a problem if you're a trainer. No one's going to say anything to you. Like, okay, no problem. Okay. So then if we go down to this one, it's going to take me to my next question. So now we haven't discussed everybody on this list. So you should know which ther theorists believe sublimation was how we choose chose our career. Brill, yes, because we didn't discuss him. We know Bandura, social learning, self-efficacy. We know Ginsburg because Ginsburg came up with, uh, he was a developmental therapist and super borrowed from him. Roe borrowed from Maslow. OK, 
Okay, so Ro, she was, she looked at the motivational needs that we didn't get, what we didn't get from our parents. Okay, so Brill is my guy who was unconscious. He was a follower of Freud, so psychoanalytic. All my defense mechanisms are unconscious. That's how I know it would be Brill. So the question before you gave it a hint. Sorry, the test doesn't work that way. <laughs> Sorry. However, I do know that that's what that makes that. That's Brill. Okay. Good, good, good. 435, the OOH. Has anybody not seen it, the OOOOH? Everybody seen it? Would anybody like to see it? <laughs> it did um, replace with DLT. The, so that's actually still there, I believe. The, o, the OOH has been around for a long time. It's my occupational handbook. It looks at um, all the careers out there. And what it does is actually, um, I make my, my students actually do a search. It kind of lets you see what the options are out there when it comes to your job. It doesn't tell you where you can get the training. It does tell you of, of the training that's required. Okay, so I was just kind of searched if I put counselor in. Then it'll tell me all those lovely kind of counselor jobs and then what would they pay. So let's see if I put in this one, substance abuse, behavioral health, or mental health counselor. I'm going to click that one. Sorry, I'm just closing out some windows here. Okay. Then it's going to look at the list of jobs in that environment. Okay, so then the median pay, uh, minimum of bachelor's degree, on the job training, the number of jobs, the outlook. That's always important, especially if you're working with students or people in general. So look at the outlook. 22% more than average. So the job outlook for this field looks really, really good. And in general, what I do think is, especially as we have a lot of our baby boomers who are retiring and we have new people coming in, um, there, this is, uh, unfortunately, the worse the world is, um, the more there is a need for counselors. Okay, and that's just is what it is. Okay, tells you how, the pay, the job outlook, all of those things, and also will link you to ONET. Okay, so that's what, that's how it works. And there's what, what they do, you can keep going. Okay, so it's really, really cool just in general, especially if you're working with people of, you know, to kind of knowing like what careers are out there or what it pays. And again, this is a, a nationwide search, because so in your level, it may be something else. But then if I put in like, if I put in a licensed counselor, let's see if LPC comes up, may not. I've been marriage family therapist. Okay, there we go. So then a master's degree, not necessarily an LMFT, it's not one of those, it just says in general. Okay, so how to become a therapist, all those good things, and get a link to ONET. Okay, so that's just how that works. That's your OOA, it's your Occupational Outlook. It's put out by the United States Bureau of Statistics. Okay, and then in general, I like to kind of see what's the, like, home. Okay, it'll tell you the featured careers. It'll tell you the highest paying careers. Okay, let's see here. Let's look at the fastest growing. You know what? If you want to um, learn how to uh, install um, solar photovoltaics, those are those big old things that, you know, the people who uh, uh, do solar insulation, um, you know, or even sometimes some of the internet people who are out there doing, you know, these things so they can, we can all get Wi-Fi. The pay is not so great. However, look at that growth rate. Um, let's see here. Wind turbine, if you decide it's not working out for you. Um, a statistician, 31%, and they pay 87000 a year. Just saying. Okay. So again, it tells you kind of, again, where it's growing and then what the salary is. So that is my OOOH. Okay. So then, 435. 
And I think someone chimed in already. That is B. It doesn't tell you where to get uh, trained. Okay. SDS does belong to um, Holland. That's his inventory that was placed online. You can do it now um, through schools, but you can do it and, and interpret it yourself. So it is A and B, uses computer, and it is it doesn't require professional interpretation. That is correct. Um, you can't, I can't find a free one out there, but you know, most often the, someone will buy the program and they'll use it for their students. Okay, I'm going to look at number 438. Which of the following conclusions is supported by research? What does research tell me when it comes to these things? Yeah, yes. And of course, that's not always the case. Of course, there are people who have a lot less education than I have and make a lot more money than I do, but overall, what we know is uh, college graduates make more money. You got it. Okay. 439, we're going to Ginsburg. Remember, Ginsburg was there before Super borrowed from him, Ginsburg and others. She's 11. What stage is she in? Yes, yeah, yes, Lori. She's in my fantasy stage. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So my fantasy stage up to 11. When I was really little, I was really pretty sure I wanted to be Superwoman. I thought she was pretty cool. I really just wanted, okay, so when I was like, you know, 9, 10, I just really wanted like to have enough breast to fill up the, the Wonder Woman costume. That's all I really wanted. So I thought she was great. Okay. 440. Sand Deep. <laughs> Sand Deep. What did he do? What stage is he in? 440. <laughs> Wonder Woman was amazing, okay? Not only was she like got a great body and she was smart and she saved the world. That's all I wanted to be. <laughs> San Deep is a high school senior and he's considering his career options. He excels at math and science. He's expressed an interest to his parents in marine biology. Over the summer, he participated in student internship program at the aquarium, and he really enjoyed his experience. According to Ginsburg, what career stage is he in? Okay, so remember, my Ginsburg had my fantasy, my tentative, and my realistic. Okay, and he did say that my tentative stage was up until the age of 17. However, let's look at Sandy. Is he in the tentative stage? Ah, but this class is in high school. Read the rest of it. He's done an internship. He enjoyed the experience. Um, he excels at math and science. He's already told his parents. So he's in realistic. Okay, yes, he's in high school, but he's still in my realistic stage because he, he knows he's got a plan. So my tentative stage would be, oh, you know, I like fish and I want to be a marine biologist. That's all he had done. But like, he's like, wait a minute, not only does he like fish or, you know, the aquarium, but he's also really good at math and science. He's at an internship. So, yeah, so he has passed that. Got it. Got it. So, um, and all of the, the developmental theorists, whether it's like, you know, oral anal phallic latency, which is Freud or Erickson stages, um, most often it's going to match the age, most often, but sometimes it doesn't. So be sure that you know what happens in those stages. Yes, exactly. He's been doing stage related to that. So in general, make sure that you know the stages as well as the number of age they should be because sometimes people don't always match up. Okay. So you might sometimes get, you know, he's 38 and he, you know, is still trying to find himself. Where would he be? Okay. So making sure that you know what happens in those stages, not just what, um, what age they should be according to the, the theorist. Okay. Oh, 442. We talked about this. The father of career development would be. <gasps> yeah, yes. Mr. Parsons. Good old Frank. He wrote that book thing. Okay. Remember Ginsburg? <laughs> 
Yes, I can be 38 in my fantasy stage. <laughs> you can be, actually. So it might say, you might see a question that says, because of what they're wanting to know, not only do you know the stages, um, but, you know, not only do you know the age, but do you know the stage? So, yes, if I am, um, and I don't know if you know, some grown men who sit around and still think they can be rappers or who still play video games and they're like in their 40s. So, yeah, they are still in that, <laughs> in that, that fantasy stage. Yes. Grow up and get a job, dude. <laughs> yes. And I'm sorry if anyone in that room, I didn't mean to offend anybody. So if you're trying to develop your rapping career after, after you get your license, hey, more power to you. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking if you're past 40 and you hadn't made it in like the music industry, rapping or um, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I'll keep my opinions to myself. So super, super remember is my developmental guy. Um, he bought self-efficacy. I just call psychological damage. I do apologize. So, just don't give up your day job. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> yeah. So I'm a social worker. We don't do career counseling. So now you know why. Uh, again, super is my developmental guy. Okay. And he borrowed from Ginsburg. So those are both developmental people. Holland, Trait, and Factor. Parsons is my father of vocation. And again, so repetition is the key. And you'll never know everybody. I, that's not even possible. But what you do want to know is when you hear those key terms, you know who it is. That really makes those in application questions a lot easier. So that's why I'm repetitive, again, over and over again, saying those terms. Um, and I can't be with you in your pocket, but I can be with you in your head. And the goal is that you'll hear me in your head. I know. Okay, for uh, 443, Myers Brig, how many combinations are there? There are 16, that is correct. My Myers Brig is my personality. Okay, so it is based on Carl, I'm sorry, Carl Young's archetypes. So my MBI, my MBTI, you will get a, uh, you'll do a personal inventory. Um, I've used these when I did marriage counseling with clients to help them understand kind of how, why their um, partner is different than they are. Okay, so that is my personality type. So you're either an E or an I, okay, an S or an N. Oops, come on down. Close. Okay, S or an N, thinking or feeling, judging or perceiving. So you'll take the inventory, and the MBTI is also an inventory. And you'll come up with those letters. And that lets you know who you are and what your personality type is like. However, that is based on Carl Jung. And Carl Jung had actually lots of archetypes. However, there's only four that this is based on. Anima. That is the ma. He said that most of us, we all of us have uh, two sides. So if I am a man, I'm a female on the inside of me. I have a ma. Ma is always the female. Okay, and if I'm a woman, then I have a must. But I always remember ma is female. The shadow, you see those lovely devil horns right there? That's the side of us we don't really want people to see. Um, you know, the Incredible Hulk would say, you don't want to see me when I'm angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. Because so he tried to keep that out for out, that, um, that front on the outside. Persona, see the mask? That's the side we want people to see. And then the self, that's the part that we don't know about ourselves and other people don't know either. So all of those are part of Carl Jung's archetypes. Okay. And the MBTI is based on Carl Jung's four archetypes. Okay. There are 16 of those. There are, um, everyone gets four. There's out of the four, out of the 16, you're going to pick one from each category and that is four. The ASVAB, that is the army test. What does that measure? What kind of test is that one? It is my aptitude. My aptitude is based on what I know, what is my ability to learn. So the ASVAB tests um, high school students. It looks at your science scores, your math scores, your mechanical skills, all of those things. If you score high on the ASVAB, there's an assumption that you would do well in the military. So it's looking at your aptitude. An achievement test would be the NCE. Yes, you'll all have achieved this. 
um, an ability test, um, and then my um, um, so achievement test is the NCE, the NCE. An ability test is I'm looking at your ability. Many times that can be like a speed test. If I'm looking about how fast you put widgets in the hole, um, I'm, I'm old enough to have taken typing and you had to type out so many words per minute. I know, I know, back in the day. Um, but yes, so those are, at, those are ability tests. How well can I do this? Okay, look at 445. Karen, super, super, yes, the rain, but no, super, 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 super. Yes, rainbow. Exactly. That's what you want to do. Put the theorist to the name. Okay, because you'll see the questions like that. Oh, super, I need rainbow. Self-directed scale. I'm thinking Holland, right? Self-interest inventory and self-directed scale are both belong to Holland. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow is super. The Jahara window. Are you familiar with that one, guys? Yes, that one, they're both, they belo both belong to um, Holland. Okay, my Jahara window. Um, so if you do know what it is, if you feel, you're more than welcome to explain it if you'd like. Any volunteers? I don't mind. My Jahara window many times is something you will see like in a, a business meeting sometimes, uh, an orientation as you get to know each other. Sorry. Get out there. Okay. And what the Jahara window said is that I have four sides to me. And this is, again, it's in the career section because it's most often used in business. Um, and what he's, what it says, is I have an open side. Those are things that, that you know about me and things I know about me. Um, you know, I am on social media. I'm on Facebook. I pretty much everyone knows I have three kids. I'm a college professor. That's my open area. The things that, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put out there, we're good. Exactly. The bigger the first one or the smaller the second one. All of those areas, actually, Aaron, any change on any side, then changes it. So, yes. Okay. So, the open area things that I, you know about me. Okay. My blind area, think of your blind spot. Those are things that you may know about me that I don't know. Okay. Um, one of my friends I looked at my, one of my videos and he said, Pam, you <laughs> make too much noise when you're in your videos. I'm like, oh, thanks. I appreciate that because I wasn't aware of that. Your blind spot is like when you're driving, what you don't see, but someone else can know about you. Um, yes, I have seen the Jahara window on the test. Okay, I've never taken the test. I'm not going to lie. I have heard what ha the reason I know what I know most oftentimes is because I keep up with all of the readings. And then my students who have taken the test will then come back and tell me what to look for on the test. So, yes. Um, and if any of my other people have taken the test before to see if they've seen the Jahara window on there, I would appreciate that chat in. But yes, I have heard it's been on there. Okay. And it's under the, it's under the career section. So then my hidden area are things that I am not going to tell you. Things that I know, but things I am not putting out on social media. That's hidden from the world. Okay. And my unknown area are things. Go ahead. I have a question um because i'm trying to relate it to the career so that, that is related to like when they do like the amplitude test to see you know the highest that the person can i guess uh do well on or something like that so most often it's related to career because it's you'll see this in a in a business so it's not necessarily helping you pick your career but it's a tool that a, a agency might use or a business might use Okay. 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 Um, it's probably the assessment area too because it's an assessment tool. Um, but it was developed by psychologists but used in business most often. So what you'll see is you'll see um Johnny did this, what quadrant increased? Or um there are things about Johnny he won't share with the group. What quadrant is it in? So we've got your left, your right, your rear, and your front. So your left rear is what people know about you. 
your right rear is what people let you, people know about you, but you don't know your hidden area and then your um, unknown area. So what you'll see is where does it where does it go? And also you'll see a question maybe about how things change. Someone mentioned that earlier. So then if if my open area, if I share more with you, then my hidden area becomes smaller. So then no, if, if I get input about from my blind area about me, then my open area changes. Okay, so all of those things have an effect on those four areas of my personality. That's my Jahara window. Okay. So then, um, we didn't discuss these. Oh, no problem. Okay, which of the following theorists is not a decision career not a not a decision theorist in career counseling? Okay, the answer to that one is Havingshurst. So Havingshurst, anybody know him? So what Havingshurst said was that we have So he said that it wasn't a choice. We didn't have to make a decision. It was like everything else in life. We just did it. Okay, so these are, he's a developmental guy, but he said those are things that we just did. Okay, so that's Havingshurst. So he said that you that life a career was not a decision. It just happened. You chose a life partner, you established a family, you established a career. Okay. So he's my non decision making guy. Okay. Four five oh. Which of the following is not one of Holland's six kinds of occupations? So reassec, which one of those is not a reassec? Inventive, very good, because it is investigative. Got it, got it. Sally, 451, look at little Sally. She wants to be an elementary school teacher. She's completed the self-directed search. That's the one on the computer, the SDS by Holland. And determined she would be a best at what with her, um, what would she be the highest in? 451, she would be. She is social. She's very social. Realistic are people who like to work with their hands. And unless Sally was, you know, choking those kids, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be the best choice. <laughs> oh, no, uh, my realistic people are hands on. Um, so, yes. So it is social. Perfect, perfect. Okay. 452. Which of the following codes do not have a resemblance to the RIE? Which do not match my RIE? Exactly, my SAC. So all we all get six letters. None of those match at all. None of those match. Okay, guys, I do have to wrap it up. So we talked about careers today. We talked about a couple of them. Um, I'll probably continue this one. I um, actually, I may continue this one next week. I might bump that schedule around. I can do a careers part two because there's a couple of people that are still I want to talk about careers. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll change that schedule. If you're scheduled for next week, I'm going to go ahead and do another section on careers. Okay, I'll just bump it around and kind of add some other things. This is some other career people I want to go over. Uh, but we did cover the major guys today um, and, you know, enough to really go through the test and look at um, the major people. The goal is that you'll never, ever know everybody. Um, but the best we can do is know the big people so you can rule out who it is not. So I do suggest that you go back and watch the video. Um, you know, while it's fresh in your mind, it will get it. will be here for 30 days. I'm going to stop recording right now so you can see it. I do ask you guys to be safe as you're out there. Um, and you are in the field of counseling. So many of you, um, if you don't look like me, this is the one chance or one, not one chance, but it's a great opportunity to make sure that you are educating your clients um, and the people in your life about the importance of diversity um, and how it's important that we understand each other's culture. Um, and I can say that um, 
in my life, I'm 54 years old, and I am very glad to see the changes that we're seeing in America. I'm sure everyone doesn't agree with me, but it's my platform, so I will tell you that um, I appreciate you for doing what you do. I appreciate you for um, seeing people for who they are. Um, and again, you know, I, I, it's America is not not a melting pot. We don't want that. We want it to be a salad bowl. We want to appreciate difference. We want it to our, our lettuce to be crunchy and wonderful and to, to appreciate our tomatoes. Um, and because our clients don't look like us, um, we're going to celebrate that and learn more about our clients. That's our job as counselors and also as parents. I appreciate you guys for all you do. Thank you for being amazing world changers. I will see you again. If I don't have you individually, I'll see you again the next week. Um, be safe. That COVID thing is still very, very real. And we need you to continue to change the world. Bye, guys.